Everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with John. Hello. Hello. Hi, Chris, and, and hi, friends. Well, for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Uh, John Joyner here, and I'm a Microsoft MVP for Azure. Uh, and that's got, like the, why I'm here. Uh, the, the who behind the why. Uh, gosh, you know, I'm a retired uh, U.S. Navy Lieutenant Commander. I did uh, computer stuff in the Navy. My last tour of duty was uh, network, National Network Security Officer for the Naval Bureau Personnel which maybe when we get later in my chat, it's going to tie in how my career has kind of come full circle back to cybersecurity, like mm. a lot of IT professionals. Yeah. Uh, but I started with cybersecurity in the forces. And uh, since retiring 20 years ago, uh, I've had the pleasure of working for a, a single employer, the same one, a, a fantastic oh, wow. MSP, MSSP. Um, we have had one M&A. So our, our, for the last four years, we've been using the accountability.com uh, accountability uh uh, or AIT accountability is uh, accountability with IT at the end. So it's not with the Y, it's like yeah. accountability IT or just mm-hmm. AIT. So that's my current provider or current employer, but it's been the same one for 22 years. And so um, I know I'm, I'm bridging out of introduction into like chat. But no, that's uh, that's fine. That's a, we're usually where we go. I mean, one, hey, congrats on being with a single employer. Like, you know how rare that's getting. Uh, we're, we're, it, well, we're in the gig economy I'll tell now. you my secret. Shh, don't tell yeah. anybody. It's like have faith in Microsoft's roadmap, even mm. when it gets bumpy in the short term. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's um, how I was saying, segueing from my like career path to or intro to career path or to history, et cetera. But uh, it was through that work uh, in, the, in the military because the, 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 the military and the Navy in particular were early adopters of Windows NT. Uh, Windows 95, you know, Windows uh, 2000, Exchange 2000, uh, ex- the defense messaging system, the replacement for the teletype based communications method of talking with, with bases all around the world was replaced by Microsoft Exchange, you know, starting oh, yeah. in the 90s. So and I was at the ground floor of that. And uh, so I learned to trust Microsoft early and coming rolling out of the military, I just I just landed at a great place, uh, you know, in the hometown of my dad, Little Rock, Arkansas, where I'm still I am. And, uh, you know, what I learned uh, in, in my in 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 uh, in the in the military is a tour before the Bureau of Personnel is with NATO. And that's where I learned my basic, most basic core skills, because and what I learned from those guys uh, I, is, is been like lasted me my whole life. I'm telling you, like, how have I stayed in the same place the same the whole time? Because have you applied the same consistent principles using Microsoft tools and whatever the Microsoft tools were at the time using those principles, it's been highly successful, you know, and those principles center around management and monitoring. You know, I was just going to make the comment. (laughs) So I, I, so I was, uh, you know, born and raised and started my career in the San Francisco Bay area. So in a very, uh, um, unfriendly environment to a lot of Microsoft, even though Microsoft, of course, is Mm -hmm. all over the place, but with all the startups community, I worked with IBM for years. I worked with a bunch of other high tech companies and I kind of found my way later uh, in, so what, 12, 15 years into my career into the Microsoft world where I've been ever since. And I've had some friends that asked me very pointedly, like, are you going to get ever get back out and come back over into, there's so much happening in FinTech and elsewhere, but it's non Microsoft technology. I'm like, no, I, I'm, I'm enjoying what I do. I like my company a lot. I, it, there's a lot of variety. There's, as you say, there is a roadmap for the products that I'm actively engaged. I can see based on what I'm doing today that like I can see my retirement, you know, that will be when I stop, you know, uh, there's a, there's yeah, what a, a precious, right. what a precious uh, asset to any job, you know, and there's hardly anybody outside of us maybe Microsoft, Amazon, and Google people that are, that are attached to these really long-term projects yeah. and con- business concepts that are going to drive technologies. So uh, what do you, I mean, I don't know if you, maybe you've done this before. Have you ever um, talked to like 
uh, you know, current college students or anything and given them recommendations or they've asked questions like, what do you recommend as far as a career path? So not just like not the brands that, you know, Microsoft as, as a brand, but mm-hmm. the, the space, have you ever talked to them and given that advice? Well, now you're as now, now you're, you're back into MVP territory. If you didn't know, I asked part of my MVP portfolio as a community service every year, every two years, I teach a pro bono course at the University of Arkansas in cloud computing and management uh, and have for 12 years. So I've done seven teaches of it. And uh, yeah, I am actively involved in, in that aspect. You know, also you know, through the University of Arkansas, we have a hackathon, a blockchain hackathon that oh. I've been able to participate in twice meaningfully, you know, because uh, as an Azure MVP, um, I am very familiar with Azure microservices like Event Hub and Log Analytics and, and, and you know, Azure Automation, Anomaly Detection, Machine Learning Technology, and that uh, any blockchain solution can be, uh, can be enhanced with automation and, and security and monitoring that, that I can bring, yeah. you know, and so it's been, it's been rewarding, uh, wor- you know, working with university kids at all levels, you know totally on board with that. Good question. I, I know there's a, a lot of interest in the younger crowd into in, in the blockchain and specifically on the crypto side. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, I was never that passionate about the crypto and, and uh, you know, and, and basically the, the, the investment, the people, the mm-hmm. frenzy that happened around that side of it, although I've got investments that are, you know, like, like <laughs> a lot of us, um, but blockchain as a technology yeah. is something that is, um, I mean, fascinating. I, know, I don't know. Were you involved at all with Microsoft's foray into the space? And I know that they've kind of shut that down and just kind of. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I tell you what, I was was I was, I was at, you know from the cybersecurity side. I was I was involved in detecting people using their Microsoft resources in an unauthorized fashion for mining and other activities. Oh, so yeah. you know, <laughs> I no, I, I I haven't invested personally deeply into the sector. Um, but I, I really appreciate the logic of blockchain, you know, uh, almost like, you know, quantum cryptography depends on the, uh, the uh, data not being observed because the act of observing changes the state, right? Just like blockchain, blockchain is self-evident. Like if you don't have the whole blockchain and it's not accurate, you have nothing. Yeah. So it's very futuristic. I love it. Um, the downsides are the energy consum- consum- consumption part. It makes me yeah. un- un- a little uncomfortable, yeah. but um, I'm excited about it too. I think it, I think stuff like blockchain and like cryptocurrency is the future, and I I I, I hope we as as a society overcome the negative resource consumption of the current model because the rest of it I think is perfect. <laughs> well, think of like the concepts around that. I know we're going on a little bit sideways, but uh, sure. you know, some of the concepts around it, uh, you know, like I might, I was introduced into the concept was through like a lot of people online, you know, virtual games and, and the, the interaction of virtual dollars, coins, whatever, whatever it was with, uh, you know, fiat currency and being able to move things around and, and build up currency mm-hmm. in the virtual world and turn it into actual real currency on the other side, selling objects, selling mm-hmm. things. I mean, NFTs are a big thing where they were before they fell back down. Uh, um, but it, no, but I get the, you. I get but, you. But the, but the transactional. So a lot of the things like even I think it's impacted the way that we think about even like finance and investing, the ability to go in and buy a uh, an increment of a share rather than an entire share. Uh, you know, those kinds of concepts came from that world, from, from that line mm-hmm. of thinking. Um, and then, of course, you know, that then democratizes a lot of, you know, a, a, a lot of areas so of investing in real estate in um, I, I think it's going to change advertising, online advertising platforms and things that are going to allow you to, um, to, to do kind of, uh, you know, micro payments, uh, you know, across systems in a trusted manner in a fully automated manner, just things that 10 years ago were, you know, impossible to go and build. So exactly. This is, again, it's, it's not mm-hmm. my space. I think it's very exciting, you know, watching that kind of happen, but um, but that's the kind of thing where if that if I were a 
soon to be graduate that's interested in technology, yeah. but maybe has a finance or business background, there's a lot of opportunity in that area. I agree. I, 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 I would first steer them towards cybersecurity and identity management. Yep. For if you want to do something that for the next 50 years, no matter what happens, as long as there's a society that keeps, that maintains or keeps going, those two, I think those are going to maintain. And, 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 and if you want to specialize in a, in a technology, blockchain is probably, because that includes encryption, yeah. you know, that includes scaling, that includes you know, all, all, all of the, all the architecture elements uh, that, that we, that the Microsoft cloud supports too. So um, in my, my work with the university kids showed me that, that at Microsoft, there's a lot there, we, we interoperate well with, with crypto based solutions and blockchain solutions. It, it, the solution doesn't have to run on the, on Azure, mm -hmm. but Azure can monitor it and secure it and manage it and report on it and back it up, stuff like that. I, I think, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of companies. I mean, my company certainly believes this as well that, so we are a multi-cloud vendor yet at the core of all of our solutions is on Azure. So it's exactly like I said that I think Microsoft is, is set themselves up to be able to interact with their direct competitors and be able to have a story. That yeah, amen, amen. Honestly, uh, we know when I posted uh, this this MVP award in my social media, you know, I have friends, I have old shipmates uh, from the Navy that aren't involved in any of this stuff, and they're like Amazon people, and they're like, for years they've been able to heckle me about Amazon, you know. But this year, you know, I told them, you know, hey, you know, you can run your stuff in 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 Amazon. That's great, but Look at what we can do to, for governance. Look what we can do for security. Look what we do for monitoring. You know, look how we integrate with like service providers like using Azure Lighthouse to monitor those things for you in like an absolutely world-class security model. There's nobody can touch it. Yeah. So uh, I, have a great, I had a great comeback for those guys, you know, and they were speechless. They gave, they gave a heart react, I think. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's, I, I, again, it was an intentional move when they started talking mm -hmm. about that. And uh, I mean, again, it's, mm -hmm. it's not my space. I work in the collaboration productivity world. So I'm in a, we just got rebranded as M365. Yeah, I know. I saw that. How do you feel yeah. about that? Well, M365, that's your new, yeah, your new, well, your new I, title. I, I, and you look at the difference between, I mean, it's office with the office apps and of course, uh, SharePoint mm -hmm. online and teams and those kinds of things. And Microsoft 365 includes security and windows is part of that but more and more when i have conversations with people about the productivity suite it includes all of those pieces so it, it, it sure it does makes sense because that is already mm -hmm. like our world got bigger so i was expecting a rejiggering of a lot of the the, the names the buckets for mvps mm -hmm. and so i you know it's of course we we see that every couple of years there's a shift, there's a consolidation, there's an expansion in other areas. And no, I'm so glad to was, hear, I'm glad to hear that you appreciate the strategic value yeah. to it. Cause when you put it that way, I didn't really know how you'd feel, but for the way you explained it, I totally agree. Uh, you know, from, from architecting security solutions for companies, I see the fact that like, like the Microsoft people selling the base licenses are different from the Microsoft people selling the add-on licenses. And so mm -hmm. like the security services that come bundled in the add-on licenses, competing sales stack to the, you know, and, the, and don't even get me started on business premium. Right. You know, uh, so right. yes, there's a lot of help needed in that area. Good. Well, it's, it, I, <laughs> I like that Microsoft has never really cared about how uh, MVPs kind of identify themselves with the products underneath. There's still people. I know a woman who's just like, I'm a PowerPoint MVP was one of the first ones. And I think she's like 24, 25 years as an MVP. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what she focuses on. I know another gentleman out of uh, Portland area who's an Excel MVP and that's how he, you know, pitches. There's I started as a mom MVP. I was one of the few mom MVPs that's on my first certificate. And then I was a SCOM MVP for a couple of years after that. So for the, I think the first three years, I was also tied to a product, mm -hmm. you know, and those were the golden years, frankly, of the MVP program. When it, when the product teams were that specific and matched with such a small group, we met yeah. in little conference rooms of 20 right. people and we had the entire product team and the entire MVP team 
it's it can you know can't be like that again it was yeah. a really it was a really amazing time uh, well there's pros and cons it was uh, of course we've not done uh you know it's been a couple of years since we did the summit and i hope that the, we're doing it again next yes. spring. <laughs> i started as a sharepoint mvp to your point we always were somewhere away from the crowds, the masses of MVPs at the MVP summit and the SharePoint people were in a, in a group. You guys had your together. own, you had you guys summit, you had your own conference. Right. Yeah. And it was so, did exchange. so that was going on. Right. <laughs> right. And so what happened a couple of years for folks that aren't aware of this, it's basically like with the MVP, some of the last two times, it was more like going to college and what electives do I want to take? I've got my core that are part of this and I'm associated with this. But there were other formerly SharePoint MVPs in the group, people that I know well, that I actually saw two people at the airport as we were leaving at the end of the week. Like, where were you guys? Like, oh, I was doing Azure stuff. I was over with the exchange I people. Know. I was doing the collaboration. So it's it's different. Um, I do miss the old, the, the core group mm -hmm. being together end to end, them coming to us. And uh, now, you have to be I, I don't more know, intentional. I don't know on your end uh, with your discipline, but some of my disciplines, specifically the Microsoft security stack is um, Microsoft has a really excellent, like, I guess, private preview program, pre-release, early access. You know, back in the day, they used to call it the tap, yep. you know, and, and so it's evolved into this new, this community that revolves around Teams private channels or yep. Yammer. I, I, I assume and hope you're involved in that. Of I am course. on my side. Yep. And it's fantastic. It's the best direct communication mechanism I've ever had with product teams. Right? So yeah, I miss sitting around the conference table, but it's not that, that the program is crappy. It's just changed and it's still really high value. That's certainly a good and, and what we just talked about, it's also expand. There's more for us to go and focus on. The, like I was I, telling people I, uh, that are new MVPs coming in, like there are, you know, the, the NDI calls that happen on a monthly basis, but there are some that are kind of broad program with kind of all the different pieces. There are teams only, there's a Yammer only, there's a OneDrive only, there's other special calls that are in there. I'm also sitting on like product councils and, and, and tapped in, in different ways. There's a lot um, that you can, depending on your role, uh, that are, to your point, you know, we're part of TAP, we're part of a number of different programs as an ISV, mm -hmm. my company. Um, but then as individuals, we're involved in a bunch of different things as well. So one of the, you know, here having just gone through the renewal cycle again, and I just earned my 11th MVP, is I'm just so grateful to be part of this, to have that level of access to see and to learn about I may not directly interact with much of what I learn about, but to see all the pieces and be able to go in and, and then comprehensively be able to step back and go, what do I need to go and focus on? It would be very difficult to do without being an MVP. I'll be honest. I would I know. leverage other <laughs> I MVPs know. to do it. If I were not an MVP, I would just have to find some friends within the MVP community and, mm -hmm. and, uh, Watch them like a hawk. What are they working on? What are they talking about? Yeah, I, it's. It, I saw that when one of the things Betsy, our U.S. MVP lead, is is has been, you know, is mentoring. You know, finding new people to shepherd into the program is one of our primary ways to earn value, show value to the system. Yep. And yeah, I've mentored one person, and they're uh, in their fifth year now as a CDM MVP, and it's time I mentored another one. Yeah. How about you, Christian? I have uh, I have submitted a number of names, several that have become. There's some I'm sure, like you, that I've uh, just like you, I don't understand why they're not in here. They mm -hmm. do so much, but I try to to uh, identify those people who would do the these kinds of activities regardless of status. And so there's you know, as we were talking about, you know, some people that both you and I know that were not renewed in this cycle but are still going to deliver the same quality community activities, still give back. Uh, so still work with those people, find more people that want to give to the community and, uh, and help them along that path. If that makes sense for them to be submitted. Yeah. The, yeah. the new, the new kids that are comfortable with uh, crypto, right. As you described, you know, th this newer generation, they have a thought process. It's evolved in a way beyond us older guys are people, which is like they are comfortable interchanging virtual currencies for real currencies and like that viewing things, not in the, not like just what's in my bank account isn't all my money. 
Yeah. You know, and it's a, it's a mature and, and, and appropriate way to think. And let's, let's, you know, among the many talents that the, that the, that the, that the newer generation has as they come on board as MVPs is like, I say, it's new frames of mind, new ways of thinking. Right. Yeah, we need it. We need it. it, it exactly. I was going to make this, <laughs> the same kind of final point is that the uh, it, it's it's fine for people to come in as, as MVPs do and write about what is, talk about what is out there today, new releases, how you configure, how do you utilize those things. But you really need to be thinking beyond that. What else can you do? How does it scale? Where should Microsoft be going? And and providing that kind of perspective, thinking about the new technologies, there's so much that's happening today. I mean, I wouldn't be anywhere else than in tech. And I'm, I've got four kids and uh, three of the four are, so two are STEM kids, two on the business side, three have found their way into technology. Well, that's great. And by the way, congratulations on your MVP reward as well. Well, thank you very you know, much. It's been a good day for us. Yes, it has. Well, well, John, really, really appreciate, uh, you know, one meeting you and, and chatting and hopefully we'll see you next spring. If we, uh, if the summit happens again, I am so meantime, ready. When, when people want to find you connect with you, what are the best ways to reach you? Um, I, I'm John underscore joiner at Twitter. Why don't we just leave it at that? You can find me there and my, there's a link there to my blog and any D any DM, uh, I'll respond to. You can. I'm easy to find on LinkedIn as well. John under John Joiner, J O Y N E R. I've been doing this uh, for a long time, so I've got. Uh, I'll be easy to find, and I would. I love. I love out of the blue questions from like other professionals and MVPs. I don't know if you get some now and then, Christian. Just like I do occasionally. I, you know, people are I'm, shy. They think that they're bothering but, us as yeah. MVPs, and I keep telling. I tell people all the time, MVPs are the most connected and most willing to chat. So reach out. Reach out. Thank you, Christian, for inviting me. It was a really nice time chatting uh, about, about technology with you.